I'm Rob Hanna of Precision Content, and I'm speaking to you today from our offices in downtown Toronto. And it is my pleasure to be with you all here today uh, to, for the Tridian Expert uh, Summit to talk to you about refactoring XML content for iterative content development. I've been in this game now for well over 20 years, and I've been running Precision Content uh, since 2013 where we help our clients to empower their people through better content, processes, and technology. So what I want to talk to you today is about a series of best practices that we employ in virtually all of our engagements where we're helping customers uh, transition into structured authoring or migrating to a new uh, CCMS or updating their content strategy, uh, where we're building content models and we need to uh, in essence, uh, uh, introduce changes to those content models uh, as, as required as we identify uh, gaps or new capabilities. And so we need some sort of iterative uh, way in which we can introduce these types of changes uh, while we're in implementation and even uh, when we're uh, moving into production. So what is refactoring? Uh, refactoring comes from uh, computer programming uh, lingo, and it really is about uh, how organizations tackle technical debt that accumulates in their software code over time, particularly in iterative software design, um, where they need to be able to um, uh, refactor or update their code uh, to improve its quality and its, um, uh, and its functionality. We have a similar approach or a similar definition in precision content, where in structured authoring environments, XML content refactoring is the process of restructuring existing XML code, uh, changing the refactoring without changing the rendered content. Uh, refactoring is intended to improve the design structure and implementation of the content while strictly preserving its meaning. Uh, refactoring can uh, be applied to topics, maps, and metadata, among other things. So what are some of the problems we're trying to solve uh, with this? Well, typically, typically we might um, put them into four uh, typical categories, such as content model changes, bring in, bringing in a new corpus of content, uh, improving uh, reuse capabilities, uh, or just general content cleanup activities. So with content model, tra content model changes, um, we uh, recognize where we need to uh, make updates to production DTDs. And this might be because our current model is too restrictive. Um, authors can't do what they need to do with the content, and so they have to work around the DTD. Um, the content model is too loose, so there's not enough consistency in how authors um, are tagging their content, which results in uh, sometimes... Um, uh, uh, inconsistent uh, rendering of that content. Um, there are too many unused elements, which makes the authoring interface clunky and, and difficult to work with. Uh, an important one, sometimes uh, elements are consistently misused, uh, which could often point to a good opportunity to consider uh, specialization of your DTDs, to align it more with author expectations so they understand how they're supposed to use it. Um, sometimes you need to introduce new publishing capabilities, which requires new elements or new metadata or new capabilities in the content. Um, one big one that we're all going to be facing in the next year or so um, will be the adoption of DITA 2.0 for organizations that are looking to move up to the next version because, of course, DITA 2.0 will be the first non-backwards compatible release of the DITA standard since it came out in 2004. And finally, uh, we found content refactoring to be very, very useful in transitioning to collective, space, uh, collective spaces in SP1. Uh, so, of course, before we were working in collaborative review, uh, we recognized when we got to collective spaces that we needed to make some changes in how we were authoring that content, and we needed some content model changes. Uh, bringing in new corporates of content. So we've had customers who um, are struggling with bringing in a new product or a new line of business. 
um, where they have existing data content and we need to get them into the same CCMS. So looking at how uh, we make adaptations to DTDs to accommodate publishing capabilities, um, harmonizing metadata, even cleaning up legacy content. Um, improving content reuse opportunities. This is a good one where um, we can uh, perform an analysis on your content and then find opportunities to better reuse your content or clean up uh, some of your existing content uh, reuse um, uh, markups, such as uh, cleaning out old profiling attributes and conditional reuse and untangling some of that mess that can accumulate over time. And then finally, for content cleanup. Um, there are any number of different things that may require um, uh, broad changes across your corpus where obviously we don't want to go in and just do a replace all, search and replace uh, of content in your content. But some things uh, we've encountered in the past are things like uh, standardizing capitalization of titles in your content where it's been inconsistent to the sentence case or title case or what have you. So going in and changing that um, where we're updating typically to uh, sentence case um, from other other cases uh, so that we get more flexibility out of your content. Adding alt tags or alt text to images. Uh, fixing links uh, is a big one. Um, uh, making changes to the, the content as your style gate guide evolves. That sort of thing. So um, we're not really looking at introducing any new expensive tools uh, in order for you to accomplish this. Really, we're looking to work with, con uh, with tools that you already have on your desktop. So typically, um, how we do it is that we will work with, uh, of course, uh, Publication Manager to build maps to export content. Um, we'll use Ditto OT Publishing to extract that content and metadata and potentially to uh, build custom reports to extract um, information about the content into CSV files so that I can parse it into a spreadsheet, something to that effect. So um, we, we do take quite a bit of advantage of uh, working with XSLT with our content and the, the, uh, and the publishing capabilities. Of course, you need content importer, of course, to reload that content back into your system, uh, reloading the content and metadata updates. And finally, the big one for us is Microsoft Excel. All right, so regardless of how you choose to do the refactoring, whether you're doing SSLT or running reports, uh, I consider it to be very, very important that you track your content in spreadsheets so that you're able to uh, work with these large volumes of content and metadata, uh, spot errors, and uh, do some amount of reporting in it. So um, we actually... Um, and I'll talk about this in a second, but we actually use the um, uh, code in uh, Excel to do most of the manipulation. So that's what I want to show you uh, next, is I'm going to do just a, a small uh, demonstration of some of the things that we do with Microsoft Excel uh, in order to facilitate uh, refactoring. So um, we've been using um, Microsoft VBA, or Visual Basic for Applications, uh, which is the, basically the macro language that sins, sits under all of the uh, uh, Microsoft Office products, and Microsoft XML 6.0, which is uh, Microsoft uh, XML parser that's part of your operating system that we can pull in a library of XSL functions um, to uh, be able to um, crawl through the content, manipulate the content, read, parse, and even write XML from Excel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a tool that we use to um, make changes, large changes to maps that we're working on. So we actually uh, work with um, this tool to um, analyze and break down maps and regenerate maps uh, for publishing. All right, so we have a worksheet here where we've already got quite a bit of metadata accumulated in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, open up a uh, data map, uh, book map, 
that I downloaded previously out of the CCMS uh, using um, a publication manager and the data XML publishing trans type. I'm just going to go here, select import master. I'm going to browse to my master map. Of course, it helps that I know the name of the map before I get started. But of course, you can see that there are a lot of uh, maps already in this uh, and topics in this download. There we go. There's the master map. All right, so I'm going to open this up. And what it's going to do is it's going to create, it's going to parse through the map and the sub maps and the topics and the met files. And it's going to build me a worksheet that I can go in and inspect the um, all of the uh, metadata in, in this particular map. So it's going through, it's parsing out things like IDs on topic refs, um, it's pulling out titles, it's pulling out keys, it's pulling it out index terms, it's interpreting the structure, it's looking at ish conditions in the, the topics to understand how they're all conditionalized. Um, and this does this in, you know, well, it's just did it in real time. So is that three or four minutes? Um, and this particular um, uh, map contains about 663 topics. Uh, but some of the book maps that we're working with have well over 6,000. And they can take about five minutes to parse through. So let's just have a look at what we've got in here. All right, so... I said we're pulling out all the information from the map and sub maps so we can see and and the topic so we can see the actual structure of the publication here um, we can see where there are nav titles and chunking attributes set in the map um, where we've got ish conditions set in the topics um, we can see the maps that they're uh, brought in from and the sub maps that are part of the overall master map. We can even see information such as index markers or index terms, um, keywords, and other uh, metadata from the maps and topics. Now from here, what I'll do is I'll go and I will compare this with uh, the last known version of the map so I can see any changes. Now, um, we're not gonna see any changes this time because I haven't got any, um, many uh, up-to-date changes here, but I do have a couple. So uh, data, filter, I come over here. I know that I've got some changes in my ish conditions here. So I can filter them by color. And here I can, if I hover over them, I can see what the uh, value of the ish condition is in the uh, previous master that needs to be updated in this version. But anyway, so I can go in here and I can go through, I can make changes uh, in here. So I can add new topics, I can move topic references around, I can add new keys uh, or even new index terms. And then I will go and I will export uh, the maps. So I'll go to build RMM final. It's gonna ask me for a folder where I wanna save this to. Oops, let's go up here. Folder, demo, maps. So what this is going to do is it's not going to change any of the topics, but it's going to completely regenerate all the maps and metadata files for this publication. So it just takes a quick second, and then we can see, oops, hold on, sorry. I'm going to bring this over here so we can see what I just did. All right. So this has produced uh, basically 60 maps and 60 MET files um, out of that uh, spreadsheet. So the master main book map and then all the sub maps associated with it. So I go and I can have a look at the XML that my Excel built. 
And we can see that we've uh, got map title, we've got the uh, GUID for, the, for this particular map. We've introduced topic meta, such as uh, search titles for keywords um, and index terms, which get associated with the topics. We've inserted keys um, and, and, and everything else into this particular map. So that's the map. And the associated MET file, we can see we've uh, bringing in the updated F title for it, uh, other information, the current date, um, and other metadata fields that can be flipped or switched uh, during this, this process. So from here, um, all the topic refs are already normalized to their GUID. So I can simply take this package and I can import it back into the CCMS. Um, overwriting the uh, latest revision of these maps in the repository. So this was just one example of typical refactoring exercises that we do regularly uh, for our clients with the content. So let's take a quick walk through this process for refactoring your corpus. Of course, we understand that we have to be very, very careful um, with this exercise, and we need to do thorough, rigorous testing each step along the way. So the process typically looks something like this. Plan, develop and te test scripts, extract production content, execute scripts and evaluate results, reload content into production, and then validate that reload. So starting with a plan, always give yourself uh, plenty of time to plan uh, for uh, refactoring. Um, go through and maintain a list as you go of items that you want to uh, have for refactoring. In fact, make sure you schedule refactoring exercises into your project plans. Oftentimes when we're um, going through the first iteration or we're going through uh, an initial build where we're built all brand new models for the client and they're complex sometimes. Um, we might be refactoring every two months, every three months. Um, and then going into production, we might be refactoring every six months uh, to pick up changes and make corrections and uh, introduce improvements to the content and the models as we go. Next is, of course, to develop and test the scripts. So these scripts might be developed in XSLT uh, with Saxon um, to implement uh, content changes. They might be implemented in VBA um, to manipulate the XML and rewrite the XML um, for, uh, for re-import. Um, but it's very, very important that we develop and test these in a sandbox environment uh, to make sure that they're all working exactly as we expect. Next is uh, when we're ready and we've done all of our development and unit testing, we're ready to uh, look at extracting the production content and actually go into the refactoring exercise. So first of all, of course, you need to announce a content freeze, cease all further um, writer work. And typically we'll do this over a weekend, all right? So you need to make sure that all of the content is checked into the repository, and then take a snapshot of your Tridian Docs database just in case you need to roll back. Um, we build our extract maps in uh, Publication Manager, and then uh, run the Data XML publishing job to export all that content and the MET files to a local machine where we will uh, perform the refactoring. Uh, and then we want to also make sure that we take uh, um, uh, copies of all the published output, HTML, um, PDF, everything else. So we have something to test against once we're, we've completed the refactoring. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. Stage four, execute and evaluate the results. So you want to um, break your refactoring down into stages, um, depending on the different refactoring that you're looking to introduce, and then keep testing after each iteration. And if any part of the refactoring fails, back it out, drop it, and then move on to the next refactoring task and keep going until you've been able to refactor as much of the content as possible. Um, load your content into your sandbox for testing before moving to the next steps. 
Uh, and remember that you're going to re need to refactor all links, topic reference, and conrefs uh, to use GUIDs uh, rather than the exported file name that comes out of the uh, transform. Uh, now um, you've tested it in the sandbox, it all checks out, so you're ready to reload it into uh, production. Um, you want to be careful about um, the state that you're loading the content back into and the specific version number. So you want to be careful to extract the version number uh, when you are exporting the content and the MET files so that you can um, either uh, add a new revision to that uh, version number or if you want to add a new increment, so a new version, version that content up, you can do this at this import stage simply by manipulating the MET files associated with that, with that content. And then finally, validate the reload. So as I said, at the beginning of the process, we, we published all our trans types. So we've got samples of all of our, of our manuals and PDF and HTML and using a robust PDF compare tool. Uh, just to make sure that we've not changed any content in any unexpected ways. Using code comparison tools for HTML, JSON, or any other sort of um, XSL type formats that we might have. And then don't forget to test your content in collective spaces just to make sure you haven't introduced any uh, new errors. In SP1, for example, we had to go through refactoring a couple of different times because of how collective spaces handles white space. That was SP1. It's been fixed in SP2. But still, one of those things you want to make sure you uh, validate before you flip the switch and bring people back into production. And of course, if testing fails at this point, stop everything and um, restore your uh, database snapshot and then um, reschedule your refactoring for another weekend until you've worked out the kinks. All right, so very important that you get this right and that uh, you are prepared to back it out and start again if you need to, uh, if you have introduced any uh, unexpected errors. So can we help you with this? Yes, we can. <laughs> and how can we help you? So we are a full service end-to-end uh, -end technical communications consultancy. consultancy. Um, we're a very uh, proud partner uh, with uh, RWS and Tridian Docs, and um, uh, we work with other CCMSs as well. So we've got a broad set of experience across many different CCMSs, architectures, and, uh, and, and we're, of course, experts in data XML. So if you need help with planning, um, with design, architecture, rewriting content, then these are all things that we can uh, help you with if you're interested. So with that, I want to thank you all for your time today. And uh, I'd uh, be very happy to take any questions you all might have.